On the 16th of July 1969, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Five days later, Neil and Buzz landed on the moon. Or did they? Yes, the answer is yes. Now, I'm going to ask you to suspend your disbelief and play along for a minute, because I'm going to present the conspiracy theories as fact, and we'll get to the debunking a little bit later. When an object casts a shadow, that shadow is cast in a straight line away from the object, in line with the sun. Put two objects side by side, and the two shadows are perfectly parallel. So, why in this photo are the shadows not even close to parallel? Perhaps because the light isn't coming from the sun, it's coming from multiple stage lights. Next, we have a rather obvious prop marker, visible on one of the rocks. That is quite obviously a capital C. Some poor stage hand obviously forgot to put the rock the right way up, and left the marker for the world to see. Perhaps the most obvious blunder is the waving American flag. There is no atmosphere on the moon, so there's no wind, so a flag shouldn't move like this. And yet, here it is, waving in the wind in a supposed vacuum. There are many more inconsistencies, but let's round up with the apparent departure from the moon. As you can see, the ascent stage of the lunar module blasts off to ferry the astronauts home. It is, however, missing a rather important detail, a source of propulsion. There is no plume of exhaust whatsoever, just some pyrotechnics as it separates and then it lifts off without so much of a hint of flame. You may be asking why America faked the moon landings. It's simple, really. They didn't have a choice. It was the height of the Cold War, and America was losing the space race. Soviet Russia had beaten America to put the first satellite in space, to put the first man in space, even to conduct the first spacewalk. This was embarrassing for America, so in a desperate attempt to win back some credibility, they faked it. Except, of course, they didn't fake it. So let's see how we can be sure of that. First, we'll go back to those shadows. Here we have our own little experiment. Single light source and two objects casting parallel shadows. If we move the camera, those shadows no longer appear parallel. The moon is also not a perfectly flat surface. Add in a little uneven ground, and once again, the shadows no longer appear to be parallel. The conspiracy theorist's explanation for these apparent shadow anomalies is that it's shot on a soundstage with multiple lights. Multiple lights don't yield non-parallel shadows. They result in multiple shadows. That rock with the apparent C on it. That rock is clearly not perfectly flat, so if you were going to label it, that C simply wouldn't be so perfect. So, what is it? More than likely, it's a hair accidentally included when the photo was reproduced. We can tell it was introduced while the photo was being reproduced because the original photo has no sign of this letter C. The waving flag is quite possibly the most well-known of the apparent hoax proofs. The theorists correctly state that a flapping flag would be evidence of an atmosphere that isn't supposed to be there. However, this theory only appears credible when you cherry-pick the images that you offer as evidence. At first glance, this does look like a photo of a waving flag, but if you zoom in, it's evident that those are creases, not flapping movement. The flags were tightly folded into the pockets of the astronauts, so when they were erected, they had creases in them. The poles used were in the shape of an L, so they would be held upright rather than flopping down. In video footage, we see that the flag does indeed move, but only when an astronaut interacts with it. After the astronaut moves away, the flag continues to sway briefly, but not in a natural looking way, because of the lack of atmosphere. Now, let's address the lack of fiery rocket exhaust on the lunar module's ascent stage. The simple answer is, it's not there, because it shouldn't be there. The rocket motor that propelled the craft up and away from the moon used a mixture of aerosene and hydrazine as its fuel source. When combusted, their flame is colourless. You can see similar effects from the space shuttle's engines and other rockets. The flame is all but invisible. Take into account the use of a 50-year-old, low-resolution camera on the moon, and it's no wonder it's not visible. Meanwhile, the claim that NASA couldn't have landed on the moon because they didn't have the technology is only justified if you ignore some context. 
NASA was behind the Soviet space program in some ways, and it is entirely true that the Soviet space program did beat the Americans to many milestones, but not by much. America's first satellite was launched a little under four months after the Russians, and the first American in space only trailed the first Soviet cosmonaut by just over three weeks. There simply wasn't the huge disparity in technological capability that some claim. Now, the idea that the US government would be capable of fabricating such a momentous, globally significant event really beggars belief. Around 400,000 people were involved in the Apollo program. It would have required an incredible feat to keep that under wraps. That sort of competency was certainly not displayed by the US government of the time, who couldn't even break into a psychiatrist's office without it coming to light in the Watergate scandal. Well, I'm not a crook. As I've mentioned, this all happened at the height of the Cold War. With that ever-present rivalry, the Soviet Union would have been delighted to catch America in a lie and humiliate them on the world stage. They had the capability to track the progress of the Apollo rockets, so if the Americans had simply sent up a rocket, orbited for eight days and then come back claiming they'd visited the moon, the Russians absolutely would have known about it. They say a picture paints a thousand words. Well, here is a picture of the landing site of Apollo 11, 15, 16, and finally, 17. These were taken from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. It really doesn't get much more certain than that. These conspiracy theories gained traction in the 1970s, when scandals like Watergate and the Pentagon Papers had eroded public trust in the government. So it was natural for the American people to be sceptical of the official narrative. Things haven't gotten much better since. Revelations such as the Snowden leaks have proven that the world's governments are still happy to surveil and lie to their citizens, so it's no wonder that people are still raising doubts about the moon landings. Maintaining a healthy scepticism is to be encouraged, but when it comes to the moon landings, the body of evidence behind them is so strong that the conspiracy theories simply do not stand up to scrutiny. If you liked the video, perhaps consider subscribing.